Hey everyone, it's Josh, and I'm back with another RayWinderlake.com screencast. Have you ever noticed that some UIView controllers, even some you may have written yourself, seem to do way more than control views? Networking calls, database management, app navigation, and more can easily get stuffed into a UIView controller, which usually makes them hundreds of lines of code long and very difficult to maintain since they have their hands in everything. In this screencast, I'm going to show you an example of the coordinator pattern, which makes heavy use of delegates and protocols to keep your UIView controllers nice and small and doing what they were intended to do, control your views. The idea for this screencast was inspired by a series of blog posts by Dave DeLong on Twitter at Dave DeLong. So please give Dave a follow if you like what you see here and want to learn more. In this example, I'm going to set up some view controllers for a small helper app I've been working on to let me enter workout and water consumption into HealthKit. Before we look at the code, let's go over the general concept. In a typical delegate protocol pattern, the object you are delegating responsibility to is very aware of your app. For example, a UI table view data source delegate object knows how many rows need to be in your table and passes that knowledge back to the UI table view. In this example, the UI view controllers will be delegating back to the coordinator to determine, among other things, where to navigate to next. Since the UI view controllers don't need to worry about navigation anymore, they can focus on doing what they do best, controlling views. Let's take a look at the project structure since we're doing things a bit different from your normal project setup. Here's my almost completed app. The coordinator view controller is the coordinator for this example, and I already have view controllers and zibs defined. Speaking of which, you may have noticed there is no main storyboard in this project. Since the coordinator is going to handle navigation, we don't need to worry about segs, so I'm just going to use zip files to lay out the views for each UI view controller. Each UI view controller subclass has a corresponding protocol that the coordinator view controller adopts so we can pass requests for specific functionality back to the coordinator. Now, I have my view controllers set up already in the project and most of them are wired up, but I still need to add some code to the view controller that deals with entering the amount of calories burned during exercise, as well as the coordinator class so it gets wired in properly. To do this, we'll use the delegate protocol pattern. To wire up the view controllers, you have to do three things. Define the protocol, use the protocol methods in your view controller, and implement the methods in your delegate, the coordinator class in this example. Let's walk through each of these. In our inner workout view controller, we need to define three responses to the user actions. Asking for info about the workout screen, entering a successful workout entry, and entering an improper entry. In the inner workout time view controller class, define a inner workout time view controller delegate protocol. This declares the inner workout info, inner workout save successful, and inner workout save failed methods, which we'll use further down in the file. Next, declare a delegate object of type inner workout time view controller delegate in the inner workout time view controller class. This delegate will be used by the UI view controller to delegate actions it doesn't know enough about back to the coordinator. Now with the delegate declared, we can call methods on it elsewhere in our view controller. If the user hasn't entered calories in the text field or puts in an invalid value, call the delegate's enter workout save failed method with a message that goes with this error. This lets the delegate know the save failed so it can notify the user. Note that we aren't saying how to alert the user, just that the save failed for a particular reason. If the value is valid and the user taps the continue button, notify the delegate that the workout save was successful. Again, note that we're leaving what happens next to the coordinator and not handling it here. This passes the entered value to the coordinator where it can decide what to do with it. Finally, if the user taps on the workout info button, notify the delegate. What does this do? That's for the coordinator to determine, not this view controller. So let's add methods to implement the delegate back in the coordinator view controller. First, I'll define the extension and implement the inner workout info method. Here, I've decided to display an alert message if the method is called. What you do here is up to you and is totally disconnected from the workout view controller. Next, I'll define the inner workout save successful method. This takes in the calories passed into the method, the last water consumed, and sets those values in the review controller and displays that controller. Think of this as prepare for seg and the seg in the normal storyboard setup. Finally, define inner workout save failed. 
Again, this simply shows an alert with the passed in message for this demo, but can be anything you can imagine to display the message to the user. Now I can build and run on the simulator and all the functionality I just defined for the workout controller is in place. Working with this coordinator pattern is pretty different from how many iOS developers design their apps, but it definitely helps with maintenance of your code. UIV controllers become very simplified and delegate their responsibilities back to the coordinator. You can also develop your view controllers and their zibs very quickly, allowing you to get your app up and running, at which point you can focus on components like app navigation, networking, and more. Be sure to keep coming back to raywinderlich.com for more tutorials and screencasts about iOS development. Until then, see you next time.